Football, we're going to head over uh, to Julia Lee at Bell Direct. And Julia, just your first of all overall impressions of the market. We beat that 4,400 level. We are in breakout territory, but we don't have any volumes, Julia. Are you buying into this rally? Is it the start of something? It is a volumeless rally and it does remind me of the rise that we've seen in the US where they have seen the same thing, where the market has been rising but on very low or record low volumes. We have a look at our market today, off to a very good start. In fact, we saw the highest level in more than one year, so reaching a new high for 2012. But in the end, the market only up by 0.1%. I think a key factor why we didn't perform better than this was that we did see a big area of our market, the material space, actually finishing in in the red and that was the, the only growth sector of the market which did see a loss today in fact elsewhere around the market there were some very strong gains we only have to look at David Jones now it was trading ex dividend today seven cents but in the end only down by one cent so a positive performance there even uh, even if we have a look at Boat Longyi which lost its CEO it was trading down earlier in the morning but by this afternoon we had come to see a rise of 0.9 percent so some strong uh, gains except for that materials space and in that material space it was the gold miners which really saw some steep losses. We saw Newcrest down by 1.6 percent and we also saw our Regis Resources down by 3.4 percent and I think a lot of the gold bulls are a little bit disappointed that we haven't seen a strong uptrend developing after uh, the Federal Reserve in the U.S. announced unlimited quantitative easing. Having said that we did see some gold miners reaching 52-week highs this morning we saw Northern Star, NST, as well as Oceana Gold reaching 52 week highs before pulling back. And we did see Northern Star actually finishing in the red. We did see uh, though the safe areas of the market being sold off. So that's the healthcare, the consumer staples, and the utility space all seeing losses. But as you mentioned, Kate, anemic volumes on the market. It is school holidays. China's still on its Golden Week holiday. But $3 billion being traded it was pretty quiet. I want to finally get your take on the banks today. We saw some nice support for them but on the other side of things we're still waiting for them to pass on that uh, RBA interest rate cut. Do you think we're likely to see it anytime soon? I guess no hurry from the big four banks and the longer they wait I guess the better is it is in terms of uh, the mortgage books. So having a look at the banks we've seen Bank of Queensland move but it's been really the only uh, bank that we have seen listed on the market moving. So it's cut by 20 basis points so it's standard variable rate at 6.71 percent but we haven't heard anything from the big four as yet. Now NAB does have a commitment uh, to have the lowest standard variable rate of the big four so it's probably going to be one of the last to move. ANZ doesn't have its interest rate meeting until the second Friday of the month so that's the 12th of October and we're watching CBA and Westpac. If we have a look at CBA and Westpac, Westpac has a much uh, a stronger net interest margin of 2.17 percent compared to the Commonwealth Bank of 2.09 percent but overall the rate cuts good news for the banks. It, it does bode well for their mortgage books and bodes well for the arrears that they see in their mortgage books as well as rates start to fall. Hopefully we'll start to see those arrears are loosening up and getting better. So uh, the big four banks still very much in focus but overall that rate cut good news for the banks. And